Welcome to the iRacing British Touring Car Championship rounds 25, 26, 27 from Silverstone National here on BSR TV with me, Chris Cohen, joined shortly in the commentary box as usual by Matt Dalton and it's getting close to the end of the season. Only three rounds left after today. They will be from Brands Hatch next week when the, when the series will conclude, or season four will conclude at least, but first of all this evening 30 minutes of qualifying and then three races 15 laps each round this short sub one minute lap time Silverstone National Circuit the last race will be the reverse grid as usual and last time out we had some very interesting results because Stelian Shepelowski who was on top of the standings for such a long time during the season has been pipped at the post just by Andreas Katz who now has a 25 point advantage at the top Chepelewski is actually in second position not first as it's indicated on your screen apologies for that Simon Field closes the gap in third place as well now only 54 points adrift to the leader but crucially only about 30 behind Chepelewski Richard Wilde in fourth Ellis Stevens quite a long way back now but uh, maintains his high ranking of fifth place uh, up from ninth last time round last season's champion don't forget driving for ebay motors adam terry is in sixth position dan hunt seventh smolensky has made his way up to eighth place and sutton ninth and sutton was very impressive last time out uh, he, he took two of the victories last time as well impressive display for team cqr christo ablev is down to tenth position and then Janowski in 11th, Robert Fagg is 12th, and Diaz is back once again this evening at Silverstone. He's in 13th place. Laura Bond all the way up to 14th after a very impressive performance last time out as well. Nick McCarron 15th, Burleson joins him in 15th place, although we haven't seen him for quite a while in this series. Richardson 17th, Russell Laidler for CQR Fanta is in 18th place, McGarity 19th, and Fletcher rounds out the top 20. The qualifying session 30 minutes has already begun so uh, let's see if we can go down to the track and see what's going on out on the track at the moment. Chepelewski will be looking to take pole position but he'll have his work cut out to do it because he's got stiff competition the front of the field from Ashley Sutton and also from his main rival in the championship Andreas Katz and Katz is really in the strongest possible position now to take his first iRacing British Touring Car Championship. He has to maintain his performance this time round and then win out the last three rounds next week. It should be interesting to see if he can do that. Yeah, it's going to be uh, a real challenge. Um, I know Chepelewski is, is uh, he's going to be on an absolute mission this evening because he is extremely dischuffed with uh, how the last week went. Is that a um, word? Dischuffed? It is. It is now. I think. If it wasn't, it is now. It is now. Evening, Matt. I, I can't, I, evening, Chris. Evening, everybody. Um, yeah, I can't use the exact words that he probably used last week. Well, I'd say probably. He did. Um, no, he wasn't very happy, should we say. No. So uh, someone tonight is going to get it, and I suspect he's on a mission, and I, I think the gloves are off completely. I mean... Uh, chatting to Simon Field the other night he said that he's in a good position he's been nice and consistent up until now but if he wants to beat the two guys in front of him he's gonna have to take some risks and stop playing Mr. Nice Guy as well so and he has been Mr. Nice Guy so far hasn't he um he's just been very consistent hasn't he he's finished in the top six week in week out he's had good results and not done anything spectacular but he's he's done what he's had to do to get finishes I think you know, now, as I said, it's coming to the business end of the season. I think the gloves are off big style. They might well be, because he's 25 points adrift, but there's by no means out of this championship. He could easily get that back, uh, especially if something were to happen to Katz in any of the rounds this evening. That's absolutely right. And uh, like I said, I mean, these guys, it's almost in their best interest for something to happen to Katz. So... You know, like I said, this is the this is the end of the season. This is where it all starts to count now, and we've seen the last two weeks now that the the little rivalries have started to pick away. You know that where they would have given each other room, they've stopped, and 
people have started to run into each other and trip over each other, so... Yeah, there's some niggle, it's good. Well, Silverstone National is a shortened version of the the old version of Silverstone, we should mention, because the new version hasn't made it to the iRacing service yet, but it's it's all right-handers, Matt. Pretty much. Uh, there, yes, I suppose it is, yes. Um, there's a couple, There's one left-hander, isn't there? A particularly tricky sort of third-gear left-hander, but apart from that, it is all right-handers. Yeah, and it's going to be uh, very tricky because these are fairly long straights and then very sharp right-handers. So we got um, yeah all of the corners are basically right except for Brooklands and we'll we'll show you that one on the track from the driver's perspective, hopefully soon. Uh, it it's a very difficult little interchange Brooklands into Luffield to finish out the lap. I I struggle particularly with this. I know I'm not the quickest in the Kia, but uh, I know a lot of other drivers will be struggling with that one as well. Yeah, that's partly down to how these guys run these cars on these tracks as well. It they run them with very little rear wing, which means that under braking it can be a bit unstable, which is... Going into Brooklyn's, which is the left-hander, it is especially unsettled. Well, Andreas Katz has set the quickest time so far. The uh, green-mirrored eBay Motors car there just pulls the car off the track. Well, we've got a few new faces tonight. I wanted to point out those guys. Uh, Stefan Hoog is driving for Speedworks this evening. That's his first time out, and he's in 10th place in the qualifying already, so that's pretty impressive. And then coming down the field a bit, um, Simon Field gets his Wix Racing partner, Mark Hewitt. Mark is out for the first time as well, out on the Silverstone circuit. And uh, Vittorio Saltalamacchia, who we saw driving in the Skip Barber series as well earlier this week. Why are all these drivers pulling off the track just as I'm talking about them? Ah, no respect, honestly. But uh, those three drivers because knew. you're talking about them? I think they all fear the David Grinnell syndrome, don't they? Is, um, or what we like to call Grinnell syndrome. Yes, anyone familiar with the Skip Barber series will have noticed that every time we talk about poor old David Grunnell, he tends to crash the car while he's on camera, so we try not to talk about him so much, which is a shame, but he did well last time at Spa. And we talked about him. And we talked and about him, And he still yeah. did well. Nice two-wheel uh, drive in there from Aaron Mullen. But, uh, yeah, if you wanted to check out the Skip Barber series, that's broadcast live on BSR TV on Monday nights, and all the archive footage is available on the YouTube channel so make sure you give us a subscription and uh, just to let any subscribers know if you want us to subscribe and get an email every time a new video goes up on YouTube that's not the default option so when you subscribe you'll need to go to my subscriptions and just check the little box that says please send me an email every time a video goes up and it'll be delivered straight to you instead of you having to check out the channel later Michael Hall as well uh, Matt makes his return to the series he's been out a couple of times Is he? Yeah, very early on in the season. He's one of the CQR guys, and uh, he's sporting oh, the nice one. lime green livery. Nice and he's quick as well. Uh, nice to see so many of the, the guys from CQR making an effort coming over. It's um, refreshing. Nice to see some new blood running as well. Yeah, he's quick, isn't he? He's fifth in warm-up. And sixth in qualifying at the moment. Just half a second off Katz's best, which is a 58 point... Excuse me, 58.5. 58.5 is very quick as well. Yes, it is. That's quicker than anybody around in warm-up, so I'm going to guess that that's a very quick time. You have to forgive me, I haven't really paid much attention to BTCC this week. I've been a little bit busy with other things, so I, I am no somewhat playing catch-up. And we're just going over the line now with Michael Hall to start one of his qualifying laps. Just one of the uh, Welch Motorsport cars just up in front of him. Just coming over the line now into Cops, which is the first right-hander. Just break before that sign and uh, try and get as much curb as you can on the inside because it's very easy to run off, as we saw the car in front do there. Easy to run off onto the left-hand side. Bring the car over to the right-hand side. And this is very tricky uh, down into Maggots. Oh, and uh, Hall's actually proving how tricky it is because he's Real managed to lose control. the car there, unfortunately. But uh, <laughs> it's a left-right, but it's not really a left. It's just more about lining the car up. It, on it's the edge of, of the track there. It's enough of a left to unsettle the car under braking even more than you want it to, isn't it? It's That's what makes it so tricky. You you can't get it lined up and stand on the brakes because the distance isn't quick enough, so you have to be slightly trail braking as you, you turn. Yep. We'll try and come back to another flying lap a little bit later on, but for now let's uh, talk a little bit about Kai Barker. He's in the Elite League racing car, which is a new livery, not entered into the series before. He's about mid-table at the moment, so not doing too badly. 
I've got him in a drive cool car. Oh, that's interesting. Perhaps the info's probably not up to date. Got, no, I probably haven't got the latest paint again. Are you racing trade? Swapping things around with trading paints. That's uh, always w extra wonderful for the commentators. Now let's see if we can get the law about Bond fan club going a little bit early as we come Yay. over the start finish line. Just breaking on the sign, uh, very late on the brakes for Bond, but keeps it under control there. And you just want to keep as much speed through cops as you possibly can. And then just spring the car over to the left, but try and break it in a straight line to get down into uh, to Maggots. And she's quite nice. late on the brakes there, but gets a good exit. Try and bring the car over to the right, because it's got a very strong tendency to drift to the left. Uh, down this, another long straight here, under the two bridges, using the red and white markers on the right to break here. And uh, through Brookfields, and take as much curb on the inside as you can, that's perfectly allowed. And she does that, but the lap's not too no, great. That's, and a, then that's got to be a slowdown, isn't it? Yeah, right through Luffield to complete the lap. I'm not sure that it was a, it was a slowdown. Maybe it was. Um, difficult no, to say. No, didn't appear to be. But you, you can, can take a lot of curb on the inside. Much. That was so much curb; it was completely off the track. Well, yeah, the green, the green area on the inside of the curb, which isn't grass. Obviously, the green area is the grass, but the bit that isn't the grass is uh, is qualified as the track, so it's permissible to do that. Uh, see, I gotta love eye racing, haven't you? The little uh, foibles. Last week at Spa, you could make one little tiny mistake in, on Monday with the skip barber, and you'll pick up an off-track incident or a slowdown. And yet here, you can drive completely off the track, but as long as it's not grass, it's fine. Yeah, it's interesting because there is a lot of time. There's a there's a heck of a lot of time to be gained by going through uh, Brooklyn's over the curb, and it lines you up better for Luffield as well. The last corner on the circuit, we're just seeing Absolutely. Robert Plumley come round there as well. But it, it's very difficult to get these. It's the temptation is to throttle on early because it's front wheel drive, and the car will just slide out to the outside of the corner, and you'll be you'll be left out to dry. I'll be honest. I'm not a massive fan of Silverstone. I, it's it gets constantly rammed down your throat that it's one of the great circuits and it's one of the old fastest of the F1 tracks and etc etc and I think this whole section from where Laura is now down through the um, the complex there is, is great the whole Brooklyn's Beckett's are just, they're just horrible it's such a little Mickey Mouse section well the and national circuit obviously is a very is very considerably shorter than the full Grand Prix circuit. There's a lot more corners yep. there. The track would normally continue where they turn into maggots and that's basically a hairpin where there would normally not be a hairpin. Yeah, it takes out the, you know the short version takes out all the good bits of Silverstone and replaces it with the less good bits. Well, Adam Terry jumps into second position. Wow, what a time! That's so 58.6 from uh, seven. Beg your pardon, from Adam Terry. No, it is. It is a 58.6. That's an incredible time from him, and That's we haven't seen him qualify too strongly. I mean, he's never been far outside the top ten, if at all. But uh, second place. Oh, and he's just been pipped to second place by Ashley Sutton. Just moved into second, pushes Terry down to third, but that, that means Cepaleski's down in fourth place, and that's not where he wants to be, considering he's trailing the championship by 25 points, Matt. Does that put him behind Mr. Katz? He's, he's behind Katz by 25 points at the moment. No, so I mean he's, on in qualifying. Well, he's three places behind Katz, because Katz still has the pole. I don't think he'll mind too much. Well, the, the two CQRs there, um, that's Sutton and Hall, just driving around within a couple of seconds, well, a, a few tenths of each other, really. Sutton leading away in that uh, bright green 104 car. Hoog, though, is in 6th place. That's a great qualifying time from uh, Stefan Hoog. Yeah, he, that's another one new to the uh, to the series. And is Smolenski... It Hugo, is it Hugo or is it Hoog? He's, uh, he's Swedish, or Swiss. Did he say Swiss? Who? Do you know what? I should pay more attention. <laughs> he's, he's from one of those two countries. Apologies <laughs> to uh, Stefan Hoog. Um, but it is Hoog and not Hug. But we're allowed to call him Hug, apparently. He's, um, he's given us permission. So if you oh, he's from Swiss. he is Swiss, isn't he? He is Swiss. He is Swiss, yes. So, uh, so if you wanted to call him Hug, you you feel feel free. Uh, can we call him Kutch? Kutch. Kutch is you know, a Welsh word for well, it's not really Hug. It's more like a 
a loving hug. It's kind of one of it's one of the best words we've got, I think. Coming um, soon to anyway, BSR TV yeah. near you, Welsh language translation. That's not really gonna happen. No. But uh, Michael Hall has pushed down to seventh place, but the biggest loser here is gonna be Smolensky, surely, because he's he was looking at a probably a top five qualifying and he has been doing very well in the championship and he's he's really losing out at the moment. He's one of those guys, isn't he, who's de devastatingly quick a couple of weeks ago, and then last week, not so much. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where he is. I, I think if the top four is Katz, Chepalevsky, Sutton, and perhaps Simon Field or Adam Terry, I think they'll be pretty happy with that. I think Chepalevsky especially. I don't think he's going to mind starting behind Katz at all. Well, if he does, he's got some work to do to avoid losing out on any more points, and uh, both of those drivers have really got their eyes set on the championship. Smolensky very, very hot into Brooklyn's there, but keeps the car under control nicely. Just coming through the final corner here at Luffield to complete the lap. He needs, he's not in the 58s at the moment, so uh, you're going to need to be in the 58s to maintain that top 10 position. Pretty much for sure, because those times are going to get quicker. We're about halfway through the qualifying session now. Over the line, 59.4, so no improvement for Smolensky. And Brooklands is one of those corners where it, there's so many different lines, Matt. You can go in, you can turn in late, you can turn in early, but you've got to break more uh, midway through the corner. Some people break twice, some people break once. There's, there's all sorts of lines available. Yes, there is, and it, I, I suppose it depends a lot on your own driving style and what car you're running as well, but um, I, I remember I drove this in this car last year and it was, uh, I yeah, I didn't really enjoy myself at all. It was, um, I just wanted to push through those two sections so much, the front end was just understeering all over the place, and as you alluded to earlier, being high horsepower front wheel drive, you have to be so careful to maximise the throttle. Now the hairpin, uh, which has been introduced, <clears throat> which would have been maggots on the full circuit, that, it's worth noting, there's a big dip on the inside kerb, and the drivers will have to watch out for that, because it, it won't unsettle the car enough to spin it, unless you're really going for it, but it will push the car to the outside of the track, and combined with the throttle on uh, understeer, it's going to be a, a big thing to have to handle if you get, get pushed out along, you know, that can cost you two or three tenths per lap, which is big. Yeah, it's a tricky little section, and it's—I uh, don't know if it's a drain or what. In, in the the um, the rough yesterday in the Super Cup race, it was uh, especially hideous because if you hit that with the front wheels, it would start the front end bouncing, and could, that would cause you to spin. So there's some tricky little sections to it. It's a very tricky technical little track. It reward the guys who can, you know, the guys who have really good car control always do well here. Yeah, I mean they do well at every track, but more so here just because it's a case of tenths here. I mean you could be a second quicker than somebody and qualifying on another circuit, but unlikely here. I mean the top ten are split by 0.6 and we fully expect that to come down as we watch Russell Laidler, the CQR Fanta, coming round 59.1 his best so far. Yeah, I think it's fair, it's fair to say that you know one or two tenths here is three or four tenths. I'm just tucking into another wine gun. Oh, the wine gums have come out at last. They have. I had to, I still disappointedly had to buy my own, but... Um. Yeah, shame. We haven't quite signed that Maynard's deal just yet, but uh, stay tuned on BSR TV, because as soon as that changes, we'll let you know. I have emailed them. Scott, <laughs> Scott Malcolm coming around to complete another lap. 59.8 is best. Uh, just 5,000th off improving there. So he has Andreas Katz right behind him, the current pole man, but Sutton's time is just 8,000 slower. And that must be a demoralising feeling, Matt, when you put in an absolutely fantastic lap and you're pipped at the post by thousandths of a second. Oh, in all honesty, I'd have no idea. Um, <laughs> it, it, yeah, I actually won't mind too much, though. I mean, he's a determined guy, and these guys know this isn't really what it's all about. Qualifying's about trying to get as close to the front as possible, and... If you're in the top five or six, I don't think it really matters if you get pole or not. To cats down the inside of Malcolm there. It's going to be tricky, isn't it, Matt? Because there's 30 cars out there on a circuit, which means that on a full lap, you, if all the cars were equally spread out, there would only be about a two-second gap between each car, which means that in the qualifying, you're going to get a lot of cars in close proximity, which means you're always going to have someone in front or behind, and that's going to affect your qualifying times in places. Oh, and there's very close 
from uh, Hoog as he just manages to get out of the way of one of those CQRs. But that's gonna that's gonna make qualifying more tough. Yeah, it's you know you're always tripping over somebody, which makes it very difficult to get a clean lap in. Yeah, I've got half an hour though, so I don't think it's um big off from Hoog. Panic stations. And he's lost the control of that car. Fifty-eight point eight, still his best time. Still good enough for sixth place at the moment. Yep, that's good. I'm still going to do one thing as well with this track, the iRacing, uh, you know, if anybody from iRacing should listen to our commentary, uh, thanks very much for tuning in for one, and secondly, fix the cameras at Silverstone. So the yeah, we fix them on the BSR stuff. TV ourselves, so don't worry yeah. about that, but otherwise they would obscure certain parts of the track, which is You lose pretty much the whole of the beginning of the start-finish street, don't you? All you can do is, you get a lovely view of the pit buildings, but... Yeah, yeah, which is interesting, seems to be a problem with the national circuit on its own. But again, it's not something you'll be seeing here on BSI TV. So, uh, just inside... Oh, does it not do it on the full one? I don't believe it does. Oh, that's interesting. There we go. Anyway. So, just inside the nine minute mark now, and Katz is still on top, Sutton second, Terry third. Chepilevsky hasn't managed to improve, so he's still in the fourth position. Wild fifth. Hoog, in his first time out in the series, is in sixth place. Very quick. Uh, Simon Kutch. Field can only manage seventh. And the Diaz is not doing very well, is he? He's struggling away down in tenth. That's uh, not like him. So and the Diaz is down in twelfth, according to my uh, timing screen, at least. So he's dropped down a couple of places there. Laidler is yep. pumped down to tenth after a good lap from Alexander Smolensky, which puts him up to ninth place. And the top ten starting to sort themselves out now. Rob Burton is out on the track though, our uh, colleague at BSR TV, he's decided to oh. take to the track this time around. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he's coming around to 59.8, so it's it's under the one minute mark, I mean that's um, it's going to be... Quicker than me. Good enough for a top 25 start. You've got Robert Plum Plumney's out as well, he's got a, that's another gentleman in a very well dressed car, isn't he? Robert Plumley, indeed in the other BSR TV car with a 59.4, which puts him in 17th. Some guys who are struggling at the moment, Nils Jordan is still over the one minute mark for Pertec Racing, one minute point nine, and we saw a big problem with uh, Nils Jordan's start last time out which caused a bit of problem on the grid, so let's hope he can get away a little bit more cleanly this time and uh, hopefully we won't have too many grid incidents, it's a, it's a much simpler grid isn't it, wide and open. I didn't stop carnage from erupting at the start of the uh, Super Cup race yesterday though did it? No, and that, that brings us on to the subject of the British Touring Car Championship support races, of which there are three. The uh, the Carrera Cup, which is in the rough, which is on Wednesday evenings. The Spec Race of Ford, which is also on Wednesday evenings. And the Jetta, which is the race that immediately precedes this one. And uh, we're going to try and bring you some coverage of that on BSR TV, some of those support races at least. Uh, we'll see about... Uh, bringing some of those to you because there's some very close racing there and there were 44 cars on the grid for the Carrera Cup which you can imagine yeah. in a minute track means a second and Carnage. a half between each yes well that was that was the blunt way of putting it shall we say well I, I, I missed the first race unfortunately because it's on quite early and I was uh, I didn't get on from work in time but um, I can tell you I, I started the second race and I started in 39th position and by the end of lap one I was in 26th it was a pretty uh, incredible run through the grid. It was weird. I, people were just cars going upside down and throwing themselves all over the place. It was very strange. Well, it's definitely an action-packed race. Both of those races. There's two races in the Carrera Cup. The A race and the B race. I think they're not called A race and B race just because they're um, different skill levels. As You know, you enter both races. Not sure why they're labelled like that. But anyway, uh, Stephen Hefford currently in the 17th position. He would like to improve on that before the end of the qualifying session, but only five minutes to do so now. 59.3 is a pretty good time from the Eurasa Racing driver. Hefford's had a pretty solid season, but um, not good enough to break into the top 20, Matt. No, it doesn't appear so. There's a few people seem to be struggling tonight, isn't there? Still looking at Chepilevsky in fourth. That's, he's got three laps in. He's really struggling to get some space, isn't he? He is. It's interesting. Here he goes. He's this could be interesting. Now he's got a clear run in front of him. We'll see what the uh, Bulgarian can do as he comes over the line to start yet another hot qualifying lap. 
just look how twitchy the back of that car is especially under the brakes as he's going to get hard on the brakes in the next corner because the faster drivers like to have the back of the car slide around which helps to mitigate the understeer on these cars very late on the brakes using the engine revs to slow down the car as well and yeah that's a great exit there yeah this looks a quick lap to me he's using all of the available track on the left hand side as well on the exit to that corner he's using more, all and more of the track on the exit to entry to Brooklands there as well interestingly doesn't use a lot of the kerb there at Brooklands but almost rally driving it round Luffield, swinging the front of the car around not a great exit, no. uh, he knows that so he's going to uh, bin that one and he's he going to have to come around again perhaps got it a little bit wide into Brooklands it didn't look like the front of the car came round enough did it? No. I th we should display as well, these guys will run, you know, there are features within iRacing you can set your uh, using your tab key to monitor your optimal laps and your best laps etc so they will know where they are on any given lap that they're doing you know whether they're uh, on a decent one or whether they're running a bad one it's quite if you make a mistake it's easy enough to reset back to the pits and go again speaking of bad laps that was a big slide from Simon Field there currently running in seventh so he'd like to improve but it's gonna be very tough he's a tenth of a second off well he's uh, sorry two hundredths of a second I should I should say off Hoog's time in front of him but just getting down to those final tenths and hundreds is a very, very difficult task, a very fine game. If you if you even slightly understeer into one of these corners, get on the power a bit early, that's your lap gone. Yeah, um, I was just looking at a strange incident there with Ashley Sutton. As he pulled over, coming through the, um, well, the hairpin that's not a hairpin, and I think Richard Wilde perhaps was expecting his car to uh, disappear and locate back to the pits and didn't. He got rear-ended rather rudely. Well, we can just see that on the replay now and uh, Richard Wilde not really making much effort to get out of the way, it must be said. And No, I think he was trying to anticipate the uh, the reset there. and Well, one of the Addison Lees just going round Sutton, but that's going to ruin that lap as well. So a very odd incident there. But, uh, yep. Very painful if you were doing that for real, but we're all sim racers here, so nothing to worry about. Nope, we all use lube. Richard Brightwell then, in the airways racing. He's a new entry into the championship. Not sure if it was this week or last week, but uh, reasonably new. Good to see some more airways racing cars out on the circuit. It's a nice livery to have out there. I'll take your word for that because he looks like a blue and white stripe to me, so that's <laughs> thanks to Trading Paints for confusing everybody. Never mind. Aaron Mullen is uh, another guy who's struggling for pace at the moment. He's not on the track, but uh, he's down in 21st position. Steve Richardson, eBay Motors, is in 22nd. And no change in the top four with only a minute and a half to go before the end of the qualifying session, so... This could be it. This could be our grid for the first race. Yeah, it's a bit of a jumble, isn't it? Russell Laidler in P10. That's not too bad from him. No, it's Smolensky 9th still. Hall still in 8th. Field 7th. Hoog 6th. Wild in 5th. Chepilevsky is in 4th. And then it's Terry, Sutton and Katz to the front. Field, uh, though, Sutton. is starting behind his main rival, Richard Wild. Uh, rivalries all over the place is great, isn't it? Sutton here on a good lap. This might be interesting. Not sure he's going to beat his best, but he's uh, he's committing to it. So, well, it's going to be fairly close. Not quite. So two hundreds off. Desperately yeah, close to pole close. position. Yeah. And that was one of those split second throttle too early, throttle too late. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. It's it's very difficult this car. You make you probably make up more time in this car on the acceleration than you do on the brake. I don't think you can really late brake it that much. You just need to make sure you get it turned and Well, it's either a car for patient people or a car for rally drivers depending on how you set it up because if you like it loose, you can really get that car to move around a lot and get away with it. And if you like it stable, you really have to be patient with the throttle application otherwise you're uh, off onto the outside of the track. Yeah, it's not one that I've ever mastered, I'll be honest with you. One final qualifying lap from Ashley Sutton. Can he take the pole position? 
coming through Luffield for the final time to take the start finish line doesn't look like he's going to do it this time round I could be wrong yes he is just a little bit slower so 59 is that time round and that is pretty much how it's going to finish a few cars still out on track uh, Hoog is not on a hot lap so we'll come back to him Field however would love to and wouldn't it be great if Field suddenly popped out a top three time coming round the, the final few bends here it would but I I'm not sure. I don't think he got that good of an exit on the, in the hairpin. So, Let's see round what he does here. for the it's final nice time. It is. It is. It doesn't look particularly quick at the moment, and he's not taking a very tight line through uh, through woodcutters either. Just over the line, he has improved. Yep. That's pushed him up to six. So yeah, he now starts thing. immediately behind his main rival, Richard Wilde. He's pushed Hoog down to seventh, and. Well, good for him. I mean, that was a very good, very late lap, but he's he's managed to do it in the end. I think the the final car out on track here is Russell Laveler as he comes around the final corner here. Oh, we've got a Speedworks oh, behind Stephen as well. Cook. I will make Kutches behind him as well, so... Russell Laveler unable to improve. Hoog over the line just misses out one hundredth, uh, one tenth of his best time, so no improvement there for Stefan Hoog. So that's the grid. Sutton take uh, Sutton takes second, but Katz is on pole, and Chapelevsky must be his lowest start in quite a while, Matt. Down in fourth. It is. He's not. Oh, he's not there on the pace the way we'd normally expect to see him today, is he? But I don't think that'll bother him. I, like I said, I think these guys are on that much of a mission. That race pace is going to be what they're all worried about, and um, uh, you know, this is going to be a good one because, as we said, the gloves are off. So. Well, we've got 30 cars starting, and most of those cars are within a second of each other in terms of race pace. So what that translates into is some very close racing, two or three wide down the straights, and then it's all about being sensible in the corners. But we have heard from Chapelevsky last time round, like you say, the gloves are off. He's not going to hold, uh, to bar any holds here. He's going to go for it if the opportunity arises. Yeah, there's not going to be. Uh, this is going to be a good race. There's not going to be any old in back here. Let's see if we can bring in uh, very highly qualified in this session, at least, Mr. Adam Terry. Are you there, Adam? Adam, are you there? We heard something. Evening, Chris. Evening, Come Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to get away, but we uh, we managed to get you in the commentary box just for a moment. Third place. That's a uh, refreshing change for qualifying for you. Yeah, it's something I've been struggling with recently. I mean, I don't think it's anything more than the fact that the new guys that have come in are very fast. I mean, my qualifying time last year, I think, was just inside the 58, so I'm pleased to improve on that this season. And what's changed for you? What What's given you the pace this time around? To be honest, mate, it's practice. I have actually uh, spent a couple of hours here, and uh, I've not really had the time recently in the recent races to put that time in and it really is practice makes perfect well you must be thrilled to out qualify Chepolevsky because he is the man who has shown the most pace this season so far yeah and he probably does the most practicing as well so yeah well third place on the grid do you think you can hold that during the race uh, we'll have to wait and see anything can happen I've, uh, I don't feel as though I've had the best time of it recently I mean I didn't even pick up any points in the last race so uh, Hopefully just stick with the front guys and hopefully pick up some good points. And championship wise you were pipped at the post last season, sorry to remind you, but just Yeah, you keep reminding me of that by, <laughs> by Ella Stevens. Apologies for that. But he's now ahead of you in the championship as well, so how much how much does it mean to you to beat him this season? Uh, well I want to finish as high up as I can. I mean uh beating Ellis, yeah, great, but I want to beat everyone else as well, so that's a bonus if I do. Well, we hope to see you do well in this first race. Good luck, Adam. Yeah, cheers, Chris. Thanks for talking. That's Adam Terry for Bianco. And if you're not familiar with the end of last season, I'd go back and watch it on YouTube. All the footage is there because the, the last race was down to the wire, Matt. Were you, were you aware of that at the time? Were you involved at the time? I was. Um, just if you're going to go back and watch it, please don't watch the second race. Uh, but yeah, oh, yeah of course, I forgot about brilliant. that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and and you got to say, Adam Terry <laughs> probably would have held it, but but for some really bad luck, he was incredibly unlucky there. Yeah, he, he, you know, this is one of those things, isn't it? Big grids and 
it's so easy to get involved in an incident in the first lap and the same thing here I, I've said every week for the last three weeks there's going to be carnage in turn one so I'm you know, invoking the potential wrath of the commentator gods again here, but I will say there is no way you can get this many cars around a track like this without there being an incident on turn one. Not this week. Too much at stake. 30 cars will make their way through Cops Turn 1 at Silverstone National in round 25 of the iRacing British Touring Car Championship very shortly. So stay with us. If you're watching live on Twitch, don't go anywhere. The stream will retune itself. And if you're watching on YouTube, advance to the next video. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you soon. I'll catch you in about two minutes. <laughs>